A to Z Mysteries, Super Edition Four, Sleepy Hollow Sleepover by Ron Roy. Chapter Three. Dink and Ruth Rose ran outside. They were just in time to see the headless horseman gallop past. Ruth Rose held up her phone and snapped a picture. The horse and rider disappeared into the trees. Did you get the picture? Dink asked. I don't know, Ruth Rose said. She hit a few buttons on her phone. Look, I just got a blur. He was going too fast. They headed back to the cabin. Josh opened the door and peeked out. He looked scared. Don't worry, he's gone, Ruth Rose said. So am I, Josh said. Where's the phone? I'm calling a taxi. Dink laughed. Josh, we're in the middle of the woods," he said. "A taxi would charge a ton of money to come out here, and you don't have any money. Remember, I had to pay for your ice cream today. Then I'll walk home," Josh said. "I'm not staying where guys with no heads hang out, Mister Duncan. How far is it back to Green Lawn? Over a hundred miles," Josh Dink's father said. It would take you until tomorrow night to make it home. Ruth Rose grinned. If some bear didn't eat you first, she said, "I hear there are lots of bears in these woods." Then I'll hitchhike, Josh said. Maybe a certain guy on a certain horse will pick you up, Dink said wickedly. You guys aren't scaring me, Josh said. Dink, his father, and Ruth Rose just looked at Josh. Josh grinned. Okay, you are scaring me. Josh, do you really think that guy had no head? Dink asked. I saw him dink us. Josh said there was nothing above his collar. It must have been a trick. Ruth Rose said his head was probably tucked down inside his cape, where we couldn't see it. The hayride wagon should be here soon," Dink's father said. He poked the fire and picked up his book. The kids went back to the Monopoly board. "You landed on one of my hotels!" Josh cried a few minutes later. He grinned at Dink. "You owe me two thousand dollars." Dink groaned and counted his money. "I only have about four hundred," he said. You'll have to finish the game later," Dink's father said. He stood and glanced out the window. The wagon is here. Yay! Dink yelled. Ruth Rose grabbed three masks from a table next to the sofa. She, Dink, and Josh had decided to get three Stooges masks. She was Larry, Dink was Curly, and Josh had chosen the Mo mask. Take your sweaters," Dink's father said. It'll get colder tonight. The kids pulled on their sweaters and their masks and ran to the open door. A wagon stood in the clearing in front of the cabin steps. The wagon was piled with hay, and a few kids were lying in it. A big, long-legged workhorse was hitched to the wagon. It had a droopy mane and huge feet. A driver wearing a big coat and floppy hat sat up front, holding the reins. A girl popped out of the hay and smiled down at Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. She was dressed as a cowgirl. "I like your masks," she said. "Come on up. There's a ladder in the back." "Call me when you get to the party," Dink's father said. "Driver, what time will you bring them back?" "Ten o'clock," the driver said. His voice was deep, like it came from a hollow place. Dink shivered. Something about this driver was strange. Was it just his deep voice? And why wouldn't he look at them? Dink walked to the back of the wagon. Josh and Ruth Rose had already climbed up and were half buried in the hay pile. Dink found the ladder and joined the other kids in the hay. He flopped on his back and took off his mask. He looked up at the moon shining through the trees and took a deep breath. The hay smelled sweet, like a kitten's breath. "I'm Candy," the girl said, "and these are my brothers, Adam and Andy. We're from New York City."
One of the boys wore a black mask that covered his eyes, ears, forehead, and hair. The top part of the mask had small, pointy ears. The other brother's mask covered just his eyes. "I'm Batman," said the first boy. He pointed at his brother. "That's Andy. He's supposed to be Robin, my trusty sidekick." Andy grinned. Above his mask, he had pieces of hay stuck in his curly blonde hair. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose introduced themselves. "We're from Green Lawn, Connecticut," Dink said. "We were here last year too," Adam said. He was tall and lanky with a wide grin. The horse plodded through the woods. After a few minutes, it stopped next to a tree. Halfway up the trunk, Dink saw a wide black hole. The driver reached over and thumped the trunk with a pole he'd had on the seat next to him. Suddenly, an explosion of black flying objects erupted from the hole. High-pitched squeaking filled the air around the wagon. Dink saw, heard, and felt hundreds of bats darting past him into the night. Dive! Ruth Rose screamed. The six kids buried themselves in the hay. Dink could hear giggling and felt the hay scratching his face. Then they heard the driver laughing. The wagon lurched forward, and once more the horse chugged along. You planned that, right? Josh asked the driver. Like the other kids on the wagon, Josh had hay stuck in his hair. The driver didn't answer. He flicked the horse's neck with the reins. The horse continued walking forward, not at all bothered by the bats. Josh crawled back to the other kids. "That guy's creeping me out," he said. "There's something weird about him. He doesn't talk. What if he kidnaps us? What if he's really a ghoul and he takes us to his cave? And ghouls don't live in caves," Ruth Rose said. Yeah, they live in graves," Candy said, raising her voice. "Hey, Candy, you made a poem," Adam said. Dink laughed and lay back in the hay. Suddenly, something flew toward the wagon out of the darkness. Dink tried to burrow down into the hay. "Watch out!" he yelled. "It's a witch!" Ruth Rose yelled, laughing at the same time. "Watch out, Josh!" She's gonna put you in her pot and boil you with a bunch of frogs' eyes. Yummy, Josh said. I love frog stew. All six kids began laughing and yelling. The witch flew low over the wagon. She wore a black hat and a flowing cloak. As suddenly as she had appeared, she was gone. How did he do that? Andy asked as they all sat up again. Who? His brother asked. The driver, Andy said, he made those bats attack us too. Maybe he's a magic ghoul, Josh said. Everyone laughed, but they stopped laughing when the wagon pulled up next to a small cemetery. Moonlight and shadows made the place look spooky. The six kids looked over the side of the wagon. There were only about a dozen tombstones. Most were broken and crumbling on the ground. But there was one new-looking grave marker. The stone stood at the head of an open grave. A pile of dirt was mounded next to the hole. This is new, Adam whispered. There was no grave last year. I don't like this, Candy whispered. Dink didn't like it either. He figured the bats and the witch had been jokes, but this felt different. Dink started to turn toward the driver. But something caught his eye. A hand was rising out of the grave. Then came an arm covered in filthy rags. A second hand and arm appeared. Then a face blotched with dirt. Some of the flesh was peeling off. The hair was ragged, half missing from the awful head. I want to go home, Josh wailed. The terrible creature crawled from the grave and staggered toward the wagon. Dink thought he was going to faint. He tried to move, but he had turned to stone. 
The man from the grave reached the wagon and jumped onto the ladder. The kids all screamed as the monster stretched out a hand. He grabbed Ink's ankle and yelled, Feed me! The driver turned around and bonked the man on the head with a wooden pole. The man fell off the wagon onto the trail. He sat up, rubbed his head, and called out, I'm so hungry. The kids watched the man lurch back toward the open grave. The wagon continued moving. Cool, Andy said. Did you see that awesome mask? Mask? Was that another trick? Josh asked. Sure, Andy said. All the stuff is planned, just to scare the heck out of us. But he really grabbed me, Ding said. I could feel his fingers. Just then, the driver started laughing. He laughed so hard, he had to put down the reins. The horse stopped walking. The driver rocked in his seat, holding his head and laughing. Suddenly, his head flew off his shoulders and landed in the hay between the kids. Red, gooey blood oozed from the neck. The six kids screamed and tried to back away from the head. Wait a minute, Adam said. That's not a real head. It's just a hollow pumpkin. He's right, Josh said. Look, it's been painted to look like a face. And that's fake blood, Ruth Rose said. That's right, a voice said. The kids looked at the driver. A smiling man was looking back at them. I'm Officer Clever. Hope my buddy back there didn't scare you too much. That guy from the grave was your friend? Dink asked. The driver nodded, grinning. Yep, that's Officer Rayleigh. We're both police officers. Ready for the party?